management. Now we have discussed earlier also that human resource management, the meaning of compensation management is salary being provided to the employee for the work done in the organization. That is the simple meaning of compensation. Now here we will be talking about in this chapter, what are the various components of compensation that is salary? What are the various types of salary? What are the benefits of various types of salary that we will be discussing in this chapter, compensation management. So compensation is a systematic approach to providing monetary and non-monetary value to the employee in exchange of the work performed. So as we have just now discussed that it is the remuneration which is received by the employee for the work performed by him or her in the organization. It can be monetary, it can be non-monetary or it can be both. Now what are the monetary uh, compensation types? What are the non-monetary compensation that we will be discussing? in with the next slide compensation may be defined as a money received in performance of work and many kind of benefits that organization provides to their employees various types of benefits are provided various types of incentives are provided along with the salary to the employee and the main reason is to motivate the employee for better performance or to retain good performance in the organization. So monetary as well as non-monetary components of salary are introduced by the organization to motivate the employee or to retain the employee for better performance. If the employee performs better in the organization, it will be good for the organization's profit. Now we will be talking about what is included or what can be included in the compensation plan or compensation package. So total compensation package under that financial and non-financial. So what are the financial components in compensation management, what could be the non-financial components in the compensation management? It is not that salary is always or is only to be given in monetary form. It can be combination of monetary as well as non-monetary benefits. What are those that we will be discussing? Now, financial and non-financial. Under financial, there are two types are there. One is called as direct compensation. The other one is called as indirect compensation. So first, we will be discussing what is direct compensation. Direct compensation means directly paid to the employee. Now, under direct compensation, fixed pay is there and variable pay is there. Fixed pay, as the name itself suggests, fixed pay, fixed salary, 10,000 rupees, 20,000 rupees, 40,000 rupees, or whatever the salary which is fixed is to be given to the employee every month for the work performed by him. That is fixed. It will not vary. So that is called as fixed salary. Variable pay. Variable pay, as the name itself suggests, it varies. It varies from month to month. Depending upon the performance of the employee, the variable pay varies. That means the incentives which will be received by the employee for the work performed. If he uh, performs uh, uh, good in a month, then he will receive more variable pay. 
if his performance is not that much good then he will be uh, getting less variable pay then under fixed pay base pay is there base pay is basic pay so basic pay along with allowances so that is base pay then differential pay now differential pay means different pay given to different people in the organization is called as differential pay now this difference can be between two employees a uh, employee both the employee are say both the employee are uh, say working on the designation of supervisor but both the employees who are working as supervisor can be given different pay in the organization and if they are given different pay by the organization or in the organization then we can say that this will be called as differential pay both are designated as same but payment received are different it can be the justification can be given by the organization that the uh, say the worth of the job of one supervisor is more than the another supervisor or the dangers associated with the job of one supervisor is more than other supervisor or one supervisor is working in the morning shift the other one is working in the night shift so that is why the difference is there so that type of justification can be given by the organization and that is called as differential pay when different pay when difference of pay is there in the organization next one under differential pay there can be overtime pay hazardous duty pay on call pay and shift differential pay overtime pay very simple when a person is is working overtime that means he is working after his regular working hours for 1 hour for 2 hour for 3 hour in the organization then that employee becomes eligible for overtime and when that overtime is paid to the employee that is called as overtime pay hazardous duty pay when the job of the employee is hazardous is nature hazardous is what hazardous is dangerous in nature when the employee suppose if a employee is working on a dangerous machine where he is always supposed to take care otherwise he that his small mistake or small careless effort can result in accident so that type of job can be called as dangerous job or hazardous job now some if a employee is working suppose if he is working in a foundry and he is working near say uh, the uh, machine which is producing too much of heat now too much of heat again can be dangerous for the employee's personal health so that type of work will be called as dangerous work another employee who is working always in cold storage that is freezing temperature again if we are there in freezing temperature or if we are working in a cold storage type of condition for a longer period of time it can have adverse effect on the health now that type of job again can be categorized as hazardous job or dangerous job so if the person if the employees are involved in such type of hazardous job 
apart from their regular salary apart from their incentives they also receive hazardous pay or dangerous pay so to uh, keep the employee going in the organization otherwise what will happen no one will be ready to work in that but on that particular dangerous machine or no one will be working on that heat producing machine or no one will be working in the cold storage to motivate the employee that if you are working then we are paying you extra so that is because of the danger associated with the job and that is called as hazardous pay next one on call pay again very simple as the name itself makes it very clear on call pay now suppose saturday is the weekly off of employee but because of some urgent work the employee is called in the organization to work so that will be called as on call pay so whenever the employee is called extra or on his leave days by the organization to work in the organization at that particular time the organization shall give him the call on pay next one shift differential pay now again very simple shift differential means different shift different pay if a person is working in morning shift then his pay can be different if the same person is working in the night shift the payment will be different so that is called as shift differential pay now this is there is a general tendency among human beings among we all that every one of us or most of us wants to work in the day shift or normal shift very few people are willing to work in the night shift now again to motivate these people to work in night shift the shift differential pay is provided to them that if you are working in night shift 100 rupees 1000 rupees 500 rupees extra allowance will be given to you it depends upon the policy of organization so it varies from organization to organization there cannot be a fixed that every organization to as as to follow that 1000 rupees extra will be given some of organization are giving 1000 some are giving 500 some are giving 100 it depends upon policy of the organizations and that is called as shift differential pay now under variable pay annual incentive bonus annual incentives or bonus annual incentive again as the name itself suggests yearly incentive at the end of the year when performance evaluation is done those employees who perform in a better manner whose performance are good they are given annual bonus or annual incentive bonus so this is given once in a year then lump sum payment lump sum payment now variable pay we are saying that it varies it varies from month when a employee suppose in january performance of mr a is very good so he is eligible for variable pay in february his performance again was very good eligible for uh, variable pay for next three months his performance was not that good so he is not eligible for variable pay now this variable pay can be shared with the employee every month or it can be shared annually or it can be shared in a lump sum manner lump sum means that 
the all the amount which is due to him under variable pay can be paid at once instead of every month or instead of installments so that is called as lump sum next one under variable pay is profit sharing and gain sharing now profit sharing again as the name itself it is very clear it is shared from the profit which the organization has earned during the year now if the organization has earned profit of say 100 crore rupees the organization may decide that out of this 100 crore profit it will be sharing 10 crores of profit with the employee it is not that 100 crore will be shared with the employee some amount it can be 1 crore it can be 10 crore it can be 5 crore it depends upon organization's policy so that is called as profit sharing so apart from the regular salary apart from the regular incentive now under variable pay the employee who are performing better in the organization to promote them or to motivate them for continuously uh, better performance or continuous better performance now these employees can be shared profit also that some amount of profit which the organization has earned during the year can be shared with the employee and that is called as profit sharing so apart from the regular salary regular incentives the profit earned by the organization a small portion from that is shared with the employee and that is called as profit sharing now next one is called as gain sharing gain sharing means suppose if the organization has given a target to the employees that this is the target which every employee has to achieve those employees who achieve these targets can be given a different pay and that is that they have as they have achieved the target one allowance or certain amount will be given to the employee and that is called as gain sharing the employees have gained extra amount as they have achieved the target set by the organization in profit once profit is earned by the organization then certain amount from the profit is shared with the employee in gain sharing once the employee reach the target which is set by the organization once they start performing or producing up to the target which is set by the organization then they become eligible for gain sharing so that is called as gain share next under variable pay is achievement award achievement award again very simple it is given at the end of the year to the employees who are the best performer in the organization and this is categorized under variable pay apart from regular salary apart from regular incentive the employee will be getting achievement pay also achievement pay why he is getting because he has achieved the target or he has exceeded the target or he has become one of the best performer in the organization so next indirect compensation now we will be talking about that these are the direct compensation which we have talked about now we will be talking about the indirect compensation now under indirect pay for time work pay for time not work 
income protection program now here pay for time work pay for time work means that for a period of 30 days or for a period of 8 hours in a day the person is being paid and that is called as pay for time work that you are being paid for say a period of 30 days in a month or 8 hours in a day although you are working for say uh, 28 days 29 days still your salary is calculated for a month or if you are working for 6 hours or 7 hours still it is considered that you have worked for 8 hours so that is pay for time work pay for time not work pay for time not work means that when you are actually not working in the organization but still if you are receiving the amount if you are still receiving the salary that will be called as pay for time not work it can be say uh, the uh, for 5 hours or uh, sorry for 8 hours shift if a person is working only for say 6 hours and remaining 2 hours he is not working and if still he is being given complete salary we can say that the person is being paid for not work time also last next one is income protection program income protection program means salary protection program there can be occasion when there because of the uh, say uh, because of the external environment or certain government policies there can be less work in the organization less orders in the organization or because of some external environment now in this covid situation many organization are having less work and because of this less work what they have started doing is they have started removing the employee they have started deducting the salary of the employee that is the case with most of the organization now why they are doing this because of the external pressure external pressure is of a situation which was not anticipated which was not expected by anyone that a day will come when everything will be stopped and everything will be locked down so because of this situation many organizations or most of the organization they have started removing the employee as they are having less work in hand or less orders to be completed in hand so because of this they have started removing them but there are certain organization which are still giving the employees complete salary without any deduction there are certain companies under tata group which are giving complete salary to the employee they are not removing the employee they are not deducting the salary of the employee because of less work so this type of policy which is being implemented in the organization is called as income protection program that your income is protected it will not affect with less work or less orders for a period of time for one month for six months for one year if the company is not receiving much work not receiving much orders from the third parties 
still the salary will be protected still you will be receiving the same salary and that is called as income protection program now under pay for time not work are sick leaves holidays annual leaves and vacation now sick leaves are the leaves which are being provided to the employee when he is not well as the employee is not well the employee is unable to report to the duties and the employee is unable to perform his work also so the employee is not coming to the organization employee is not working in the organization still the employee is getting payment salary for those days it can be one day it can be two days or it can be more also next is holiday holiday means that apart from the regular holidays or weekly offs there are certain holidays which are uh, considered as compulsory holidays or uh, the holidays fixed by the government say uh, 15th of august 26th of january uh, then uh, other uh, holidays can be the on the occasion of diwali or on the occasion of other festivals the organization is not working the employee is not working but still the organization is giving salary for those days for those holidays to the employees and this is called as holiday salary next one annual leave now every organization has a policy that after a period of say once the employee becomes a permanent employee of the organization then the organization provides him certain benefits one of the benefit is annual leave annual leave means after working for a year the employee becomes eligible for annual leave now annual leave can vary from organization to organization some organization may give say 7 days 8 days 10 days 15 days or more than that also so that is annual leave so annual leave means for 15 days the employee is not working in the organization but still he is being paid so that will be categorized as pay for time not work last one under that is vacation vacation we all know that again the person is on leave but still he is getting paid for those leave and that is called as vacation pay now under income protection program health insurance life insurance and pension gratuity now these income protection program some are voluntary voluntarily being introduced by the organization whereas some are made compulsory by the various labor legislation which are in practice in the country so under income protection program first one is health insurance now it is the organization's responsibility to take care of the health of the employees who are working in the organization and the organization is expected to have health insurance of every employees who are working in the organization then regular health checkup can be organized by the organization 
to take care of the health of the employees the employees will come to know about their health if regular checkups are there next one is life insurance life insurance policies can be bought for the employees by the organization it can be provided to the employees by the organization the premium can be paid by the organization there are certain organizations which are giving this facilities to the employees this is not compulsory under any law but to attract good people to retain good people to retain good performer to motivate the employees for better performance the organizations have started providing such type of facilities and that is called as life insurance next one is pension and gratuity now pension we know that certain type of pension is being provided to the employees earlier this concept was very much popular in all the government organization and in many private organization also the concept was of pension was popular that once a person is retired from the organization till the person is living the person was eligible to receive pension certain fixed amount from the organization after retirement also nowadays this particular concept is not there with private organization but still it is there with government organization the government organizations are or some of the government not all the government organization some of the government organization are still providing the pension facilities so pension facility is very simple even after getting retired from the organization the person receives pension now 10 years back all the government 10 12 years back there was a policy that all the government organizations will be providing pensions to the employees but later on it was decided by the government organizations also that it becomes or it is uh, very heavy on the uh, government organizations that they need to it is very difficult for the government organization to uh, provide fund for this pension to the employees so 10 12 years back most of the government organization have started the policy of not providing pensions so lump sum whatever amount is earned by the um, employee under pension account of that particular employee is given to the employee and monthly basis till the employee is living is not being paid to the employee but those employees who are working in the government organization 10 12 years back they are still eligible for this pension facilities next one is gratuity now when we talk about pension facility when we talk about health insurance when we talk about life insurance it is voluntary in nature it is up to the organization to provide or not to provide it is not made compulsory by any law but when we talk about gratuity it is not voluntary it is compulsory it is compulsory that every organization which falls under the payment of gratuity act 1972 so every organization which falls under payment of gratuity act 1972 has to provide its employee 
the amount of gratuity once the employee is retiring from the organization or once the employee is resigning from the organization or once the person leaves the organization to join another organization the time period required for a person to be eligible for gratuity is fixed the amount how the calculation of gratuity is to be done that is again fixed the calculation part is there the formula is there with the help of that formula the person is eligible for receiving gratuity so gratuity is made compulsory it is not voluntary it is not up to the organization that okay we do not want to provide gratuity so the organization has decided that we do not want to uh, provide any sort of gratuity to the employees so it cannot be at decided by the organization it is to be decided by the law and law has made it very clear that all the organization which fall under payment of gratuity act they have to provide gratuity at the end or when the person is leaving if a person completes say more than 5 years in an organization as a permanent employee in that organization that employee becomes eligible for gratuity how it is to be calculated what is the calculation everything is given under payment of gratuity act and the organization all the organization have to follow that so that is uh, the um, gratuity that is related to gratuity which falls under income protection program now next one is non financial incentives or non financial components under non financial components first one is work life balance now work life balance now this particular term is nowadays very much in use work life balance that means that the organization in simple words we can say that organization should look at the employee as a human being and they should be looking at the say uh, how to develop that human being or how to make that human being who is working as an employee in the organization satisfied or how to make him happy so that he can enjoy working in the organization and that is called as work life balance so that his personal life and his professional life are kept say he is enjoying both his life working also he is enjoying and he is enjoying his family life also and that is called as work life balance if too much of work pressure is being imposed on the employee what will happen it will affect his family life if it is affecting his family life in the long run it is going to affect on the work also because if there are differences at the home front <coughs> after a longer period of time these differences will definitely have an adverse effect on the working of the employee in the organization also so to avoid that this particular concept is very popular and that is called as work life balance the employee should not be overburdened with the work he should enjoy work the work should be limitedly given to the employee so that he can enjoy his work also and he can enjoy his family life also so that is work life balance under that alternate work alternative work is there 
if a person is not comfortable with a particular work he can be provided with alternative work that similar type of work can be given to the employee where he can perform better next one on the job training if the person is not performing well on the job then the person can be given on the job training so more training can be provided to the employee so that he can improve his knowledge improve his skills which he can implement in his production next one career development and opportunities if more career opportunities and career development facilities are given are provided to the employee definitely the employee will feel motivated to work in the organization and he will be the uh, good performer in the organization so all these things we are talking about non financial so here the organization is not increasing the salary of the employee whereas under direct and non direct compensation we have discussed that money was associated with those programs but in these programs in these facilities money is not associated still the employee is feeling motivated still the employee is a good performer still these facilities are pushing the employees for better performance so if better opportunities are there in the organization if the employee feels that yes if he stick to this organization only he will have better career opportunities existing in the organization he has seen that two three managers have been promoted as senior manager one of them is now say uh, as he is working as the general manager in the organization that means the organization is giving opportunity for the internal employees opportunities to the internal employees for promoting when it comes to promotions it is not that external employee is recruited is hired by the organization for the higher positions but the policy of the organization is that they are uh, giving chances to the internal candidate if such facilities are there if such policies are there automatically the employee feels motivated that okay if i perform better definitely tomorrow or after some time after some months after some years i will be the person who will be considered for the promotions so that is uh, career development and opportunities then various organizations are there for development opportunities for career development type of opportunities they, they have a policies that they uh, sponsor their employees for higher education also now suppose a employee is there who is a graduate employee he is a graduate uh, say he is uh, a engineering um, uh, candidate who has completed his mechanical engineering and now he is working in that organization now that particular person can be uh, deputed for say uh, for a, an mba program or for um, uh, so for ms in engineering so all the expenses can be borne by the employee so here also the person is not directly getting any uh salary but indirectly he is being benefited by such a certain facility so these type of facilities are called as they fall under non uh, monetary incentives or non financial components 
next one is casual dress casual dress means instead of wearing the uniform to work every day the employee can be uh, say uh, uh, they can be given the facilities for uh, say two days in a week they can wear casuals or three days in a week they can wear casuals so again this is one of the facility which uh, attracts the employee which motivates the employee uh, because every day the employee has to wear the regular uh, working clothes so if a chance is given that okay for two days or three days in a week you are allowed to wear casuals so this can also motivate to some extent we will not say that it will uh, be motivating all the employees to the extreme extent but to some extent definitely it will be uh, one of the motivating factor of the uh, to the employees so these were uh, the compensation packages that uh, the compensation uh, can involve these packages it is not that every organization will be providing all this package all these facilities in the package to the employees it varies from organization to organization it varies from the designation of the employees employees at the topmost level they receive more benefits more packages employees at the lower level uh, then compared to the employees at the lower level now importance of uh, the compensation management uh, we will uh, discuss tomorrow so we will stop here and tomorrow we will uh, discuss about the importance of compensation management and the objectives of effective compensation management very simple objective and very simple important factors are there that we will be uh, taking up for discussion tomorrow so tomorrow we will meet at 6 am so thank you for being present for today's session okay thank you everyone thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you